So how do we tell how steep the slope is? That's a really good question. People are always asking that question. <clears throat> and there's several different ways to do it. And the way I do it is, of course, the easy way. I just use it. my iPhone. <laughs> it's got a little app on here. There's several different apps that you can use. The one I use is called Theadlite, which is I really like. And it just uses your iPhone camera so you can sight down the slope with the camera and put the crosshairs right on the slope and then you can see um, how steep the slope is on your iPhone. That's the easiest way. You can also put your ski pole on the slope, make sure it's flush with the slope, and then put it right on the ski pole and measure the slope steepness that way. Okay, if you don't have an iPhone or a similar device, then you can use a compass. A lot of compasses have the inclinometer built into them, and compasses don't cost nearly as much as a smartphone, but it has an inclinometer. It's got a little plumb bob on the compass, and you can lay it on your ski pole, same way, but a better way, like I say, is to sight down the slope because the ski pole only measures the slope steepness right here on this part of the slope, but you, to get the entire slope, you can sight down the slope looking along the top of the compass like this, and you can use your mirror to see the plumb bob in your compass. And you can slight, sight down the slope, or you can sight up the slope. And either way, works pretty well. Okay, if you don't have either a compass or a smartphone, and you have ski poles, there's yet another way. You take your ski poles and you make an equilateral, equilateral rather triangle. So you take one pole like this, and we'll just do it right here, and you go down the slope. Let's do it right here, and you mark the slope. So it's marked right here, and we're going to go back up, and we're going to use our other ski pole like a plumb bob, and so it's going to dangle right down the slope like that. And so if this pole hits my mark, then we have an equilateral triangle, which means it's a 30 degree slope. But it's less than that, so the plumb bob comes up the hill a ways to right there. Okay, so the way it works is that every 10 centimeters up the hill is three degrees difference. So this is about 20 centimeters up the hill from our 30 degree mark. So it's, if it was tr right here, that would be 27 degrees. And if it's right here, that's 24 degrees. So we're standing on a 24 degree slope. Same if you're going down the, the slope. If it comes 10 centimeters below your mark, then it's 33 degrees, 10 more centimeters, um, 36 degrees, and so on. So that's a quick and easy way. Uh, three different ways to measure slope angle. And of course, slope angle is extremely important for avalanche terrain. Most avalanches run on slopes between about 35 and 45 degrees. Uh, yeah, the cutoff of about 33 degrees, it seems like in Utah, about 33 degrees. Um, not too many avalanches run beneath 33 degrees, but a lot of them run steeper than 33 degrees. The bullseye is right at 38 degrees, 38 or 39 degrees. So the closer it is to 38 degrees, then the more dangerous it is. Once you get below about 30 degrees, then it's pretty rare for a slip to slide at least uh, in this part of the world. Uh, some places where you have a very persistent uh, slippery weak layer like surface hoard is notorious for that. You can get avalanches on slopes less than 30 degrees. Usually they're connected to a slope that's steeper than that. So slope steepness is an extremely important thing to measure.